last week, this week, and next week, we're blessed to be able to share really something that's big on our heart for uh, our church family, and that's why we're calling this Vision 2022. And, you know, the, the simple vision that the Lord has given us to run with is simply faith for every generation. And I say it all the time, you know, the way we run with it is through reaching, connecting, and serving. But there's always things that the Lord is impressing on our heart for us to focus in on for a season of time. And so um, what we're sharing with you these weeks are, are simply that, things that we are to run with as a church family uh, for this year. And I believe it'll, it'll carry beyond this year in the DNA of this house. And um, if, you, if you heard last Sunday, um, then you know, like, the DNA or the vision of this house is, is found within the name of the church, which is Christian Worship Center. It's like a place where we worship the Lord together and experience the presence of God, the power of God uh, together. And so that's something that's being uh, reemphasized again, I believe, by the Lord to us, uh, for us. And so uh, Aaron Cody's going to share for a little bit. I'll, I'll share for a little bit, and we'll probably take a little extra time at the end to worship together again and just making room for the presence of God, making room for the Holy Spirit uh, to help us and, and to move among us. So uh, anyway, would you give it up for Pastor Cody, Pastor Aaron Cody, Amen. just one more time. Come on. Thanks, y'all. Well, look, first of all, I think our worship team is like the best of the best, and they're the best of the best. And have me emotional, so I'm a little cry. So if I start sniffing, just excuse me, okay? But uh, I just wanted to recap real quick and get into this because last week, you know, we talked about, y'all know I just hit my timer, right? Last week, we talked about pressing for the presence of God and we opened reading out of Ezekiel where it said God's going to give us a new heart. We talked about almost like a heart surgery. He knows what we need and we've got to trust him at the, as a surgeon because he's going to do something in our heart, uh, not just because he wants to do something. He's doing it because he wants us to be able to be very receptive to him and quickly respond to him. And so I believe God's doing that. And then we talked about the woman who had to press through the crowd to get to Jesus. She wanted to get to his presence. And when she got there, she knew that she got there, but also Jesus knew she got there. And when you get to the presence of God, you know it. And she wasn't only healed, but the scripture said she was made whole. Every part of her life was totally transformed when she got to the presence presence of Jesus. And he also said this, that what God has for us this year will require a pressing. It's not a time for sameness. It's not a time to just lay back and say, let's see what God will do. No, it's time for us to press into his presence so that we can get all that he has for us. And then he uh, gave me this quote. He said, it's time for my people to get excited about my house again. And I believe that. And, and I believe that, and I know for a fact in my life, some of the most God moments have happened right here in this sanctuary. And so we talked about pressing for the presence of God. We know that Aaron opened the year up talking about Jehovah Jireh, the Lord who saw ahead and provided. And it said that, um, you know, Abraham called the name of the place Jehovah Jireh, because that's the place that the Lord showed up for me. That's the place his presence met me. And I believe we're going to be naming places this year where the presence of God met us, where he showed up for us and he did things that only he could do do because we're obedient to him. Amen. And so we press for presence, but today I want to go another step further. And I want to talk about pressing for a place that there is a place for us. The presence of God, it is, it is all encompassing. It is all that he is, but also the presence of God there, there are places where you can know you're going to meet with the presence of God. And so I want to talk about that. And I think one of our best scriptural examples would be King David who we know wasn't always a king. At first, he was the forgotten son when the prophet came and he said, I'm looking for the anointed one. And the dad even forgot about David. And the king, you know, the, the prophet's like, that's not the one, not the one, not the one got all the way. And he goes, well, I felt like the Lord told me to come here, but these aren't them. And he said, oh yeah, I have one other son. How would you like to be that one? He said, but he's just out in the field. He's just tending the sheep. But do you want to know what he was actually doing? practicing the presence of Jesus, playing his harp and singing songs and writing psalms to the Lord. And so he was anointed king. But the scripture says this. He said, he's a man after my own heart. And I really would love when I meet Jesus, him to say, you are a woman after my own heart. 
And so I want to look into his life and kind of see what marks him this way. Because if you ever read through the book of Psalms, specifically the ones David wrote, you will find that he has so much confidence in the Lord. Even in times of severe trouble, like the king and all the king's men were chasing him down, and he would still say, my heart is confident in the Lord. And, I, and I, so as I was thinking about this, I thought about him, and I want to read to you Psalm 26. We're going to read the whole chapter. It's not real long, and then we're going to pull out a couple verses specifically because we all love Psalm 27, but the Lord kind of revealed to me, you got to go through Psalm 26 to get to Psalm 27. And so that's what we're going to do today. So Psalm 26, starting at verse 1, says this. Declare me innocent, O Lord, for I have acted with integrity, and I have trusted in the Lord without wavering. Put me on trial, Lord, and cross-examine me. Test my motives and my heart, for I am always aware of your unfailing love, and I have lived according to your truth. I do not spend time with liars or go along with hypocrites. I hate the gatherings of those who do evil, and I refuse to join in with the wicked. I wash my hands to declare my innocence." I have come to your altar, O Lord, singing a song of thanksgiving and telling of all your wonders. I love your sanctuary, Lord, the place where your glorious presence dwells. So don't let me suffer the fate of sinners. Don't condemn me along with murderers. Their hands are dirty with evil schemes, and they constantly take bribes. But I am not like that. I live with integrity. So redeem me and show me mercy. Now I stand on solid ground, and I will publicly praise the Lord. And so we read this and, and, you know, we think, well, David, he, he's such a great man, but they're in between like, declare me innocent. I don't hang out with these kind of people and you know the plans that they have for me, but sandwiched right in the middle, verse six, seven, and eight, it says this, I come to your altar, O Lord, singing a song of thanksgiving and telling of all your wonders. And then he says this, I love your sanctuary, the place your glorious presence dwells. He's pretty much saying this, like he's been there enough times to know it's true. When I get to your sanctuary, the presence of God is there. When I approach your altar with, with singing and praising and rejoicing, your presence shows up. And so I looked at that and, and it, I realized it matters, number one, that we do come into his presence, but also it matters how we come. Yeah. I'm thankful and I'm going to sing songs of joy. I might come while I'm crying, but I'm still thankful in my heart, knowing that when I get to you, my whole life's going to change, just like the woman we read about last week. It doesn't have to stay the same. I might be hurting now, but when I get to your presence, I'm going to leave healed. I might be sad now, but when I get to that place, I'm going to leave happy. Why? Because I know my God, and I know where to find his presence. And so I looked at that, and it's so interesting. This is helping me so much. The word there, sanctuary, actually means this. And what I did, I had them make, like, I think it's a whole page. If you have a phone, permission granted. Open the camera and screenshot this, because this is going to help you. A sanctuary. It means a habitation or occupancy or residence. An abode of God, a tabernacle, a temple, or a church. Of men, it would mean their homes. It also means this, and these words stood out to me so much, a retreat or asylum, the place of where his glory dwells, a house, a family, a household, a temple, tabernacle, or a church. But if you read this and it says a retreat or asylum, I studied those words out in like the biblical dictionary and the Strong's Concordance, and this is what a retreat means. This is why David said, I love your house. I love your sanctuary. It means retreat, a resort, a sanctuary, a hideaway, a hiding place, or a shelter. But it also means this, a period of retreat from the world for spiritual regeneration. When I get to your house, I'm getting away from the world, all of its influences, and I'm having a, a time of spiritual regeneration. Something is happening on the inside of me. I can breathe better. I can think better. I can see better. I feel better when I get to the presence of God and when I get to his sanctuary. Now, the other word, asylum here, it means similarly but a little bit different. A refuge, safety, safekeeping, Protection, security, immunity, port in the storm, an oasis or a safe house, 
protection from danger, or I love this, the protection granted by a nation to someone who has left their native country as a political refugee. Listen, there is so much safety. There is so much protection. There is an oasis. It's not just a place of protection. It's a place of restoration. It's a place where when you're running for your life, you get to the safe house. You get to the, 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 the refuge. And while you, you're there, the Lord said, let me make it like an oasis for you. Let me make it like a port in the storm. Let me anchor you when everything else is going wild. I'm going to hold you steady and safe. Where am I going to do this? In the place his glory dwells. I'm going to do this in my my sanctuary. And we read about, well, it's granted, it's protection granted by a nation. We're like, well, we're from America. No, no. The scripture says you are not citizens of this world. You've got to understand your citizenship. And I have a few scriptures I'm just going to throw out to you. You should look them up later. First Peter 2.11. Uh, again, Peter, he says, dear friends, I warn you as temporary residents and foreigners, he said, I'm going to tell you who you are. You are temporary residents on this earth. So keep away from worldly desires that wage war against your soul. Why do we need an asylum and a place of safety? Because this world is not our home. And this world is trying to knock everything godly out of us. It's trying to make us think that there's not a safe place, that our security is found here. But your security is never going to be found in this world. You're not a citizen of this world. You're a citizen of the kingdom of heaven. He said, so I'm warning you, don't get it mixed up and don't get it twisted. This is not your home. Amen. Philippians 3.20 says it this way, but we are citizens of, citizens of heaven where Jesus Christ lives. Jesus said, I'm going to go away. I'm going to make a place for you. you got a house waiting on you in heaven. You've got a home waiting for you, neighbors waiting for you, the glory of God waiting for you. You're not citizens of this world. Psalm 119, David again said, I'm only a foreigner in this land, so don't hide your commandments from me. He understood who he was. That's why he could say what he just said. Ephesians 2.19 says, Now you Gentiles, that's us, who are no longer strangers and foreigners to heaven, but you are citizens along with God's holy people. You are God's family. How many are so thankful that you're God's family today? Amen? Amen. So we have a home, and it's in heaven. And so as I was reading this, I, I, again, I want to get to Psalm 27, and we'll read that. But as we were praying a couple weeks ago for this service, I... um. I got this uh, memory of a movie that I'd watched, and it took me a while to, to, to track it down. But I want to show it to you. It'll just take less than a minute. And this is the reality. I know this is a movie clip, but this is what I, I have seen this church doing this year, running to our safe place and our secure place. And so I'll just set up this clip a little. It's a, an old movie, but it is a woman who is in, I believe, um, Russia, and she got mixed up with somebody who was doing the wrong things, but they found somebody to help them. And he said, this is where the American embassy is. And if you can just get there, you'll be safe because everyone here knows outside of that gate, there's trouble. But if you can reach the gate, there's safety. And this is what I saw this church doing this year. Anytime we're faced with something that we know is not for God, from God, we're going to turn and we're going to run to the shelter of God. Amen. So I want you to watch this just for one minute. that man look open the gate I'm a citizen open the gate and isn't it interesting that the minute they opened the gate everybody who was chasing her had to stop 
Everyone that was after her had to stop. Why? I know there's a Salem there. I know asylum there. I know there's help there. I know there's security there. I know there's safety there. And I believe that as David was writing Psalm 26, he knew that Psalm 27 was coming. And so with the understanding of what we've just read, I, I want to read to you Psalm 27. We all love this one, but we're going to have to learn to go through Psalm 26. It says this, the Lord is my light and my salvation. So why should I be afraid? The Lord is my fortress. He's protecting me from danger. So why should I tremble? When evil people come to devour me, when my enemies and foes attack me, they're going to stumble and fall. Though a mighty army surrounds me, my heart will not be afraid. Even when I am attacked, I will remain confident. Look at this. Look what he said. The one thing I've asked of the Lord, this is David. He said, the thing I seek most I want to live in the house of the Lord all the days of my life, delighting in the Lord's perfections and meditating in his temple, for he will conceal me there when troubles come. He will hide me where? In his sanctuary. He will place me out of reach, high on a rock. Then I'll hold my head high above my enemies who surround me. Again, at his sanctuary, I will offer sacrifices and shouts of joy, singing and praising the Lord with music. So hear me as I pray, O Lord, and be be merciful and answer me. My heart has heard you say, come and talk with me. And my heart responds, Lord, I am coming. How many of you want to listen and you want to hear the voice of the Lord? And when he says, come on, run, come on, come on, come on. You're like, I'm coming, I'm coming, I'm coming. And when I get there, the gates are going to open and there is safety and there is rest and there is peace and there is protection and there is security. There is everything that you need and it's found in his presence in his sanctuary. So the place matters. And today I believe that our hearts are going to begin to hear again, come and talk with me. Come in and pray to me. Come and talk. And our hearts are going to respond all year, Lord, I'm coming. I'm coming. And I want to get not only into your presence, but the place that your presence dwells. And I believe that there is no storm no trouble, no situation, no sickness, no disease, no sadness, no grief, no shame or guilt that cannot be calmed, that cannot be cured, that cannot be healed in the presence of the Lord. But we have to make getting to the place his glory dwells our priority this year. That means there is no other priority. I have got to get to the house of God. I have got to get to the place his glory dwells. I've got to be with him. I believe God really wants to blow our minds this year and do supernatural things, but I believe the presence of God will be present like never before for those who will get to his presence. And I want to end this way. You know, I was in this sanctuary praying several years ago, and I was on the platform, and I was walking, but I was just looking at all the seats, and I was, this is what I do. I try to picture y'all's faces, because most of you kind of sit in the same spot, and just praying. But what I saw is that I knew that it was the hand of God, and it was like he was delivering packages to different seats. He was setting, like, deliveries on the seats. And then I saw people coming and picking the package up off their seat with so much joy and putting it on their lap. And it was always, when they opened it, it was like you could see the relief on their face, like, this is just what I needed. I had to have this. But before I left prayer, I saw something that it made my heart sad, and it was that um, when service was over, there were still some packages that were unclaimed. And the Lord said, it's really important that people get to the place that my presence is. It's really important that people get where the word's going to be delivered, where the worship is going to lift you into a new place, because there are things that happen in the sanctuary that don't happen anywhere else. There are some deliveries that aren't coming to your house. They're coming to the place God called you to. There are some deliveries that aren't coming to the job or when you expect it or when you want it. But if you'll be where he's called you to be, you will always get your delivery and you'll get it right on time. Amen. Amen. God bless y'all. Praise the Lord. That's a good word, y'all. Hallelujah. So then we're going to prioritize and value the presence of God and the place God has called us to be uh, together. And I was thinking about what's found in that place. Uh, the movie clip you just saw, it's, it's a safe place. It's a, a place of, of refuge, of peace, of rescue, right? It's a good place. 
And the psalmist David said it like this in Psalm 34 and verse 8. He said, Oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. Oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. Let me ask you a question. How many of you uh, watch the Food Network? Come on, tell the truth. How many of you watch the Food Network? Anybody ever uh, run on a treadmill and watch the Food Network at the same time? <laughs> I've been to the gym enough to where it's like, uh, I don't know, it's like people are working out so they can have the lasagna later, you know? I don't know what's going on. And uh, not too long ago, I was, uh, I was watching, I guess it was the Food Network, I believe it was, and, and um, uh, it was some show that was listing the, the top, you know, the top places to get a certain kinds of food, you know. And so they had uh, on there uh, the top 10 places to eat fried chicken in the United States of America. How many would like to know those top 10 places? <laughs> Amen. And I'm telling you, I was, I, was, I was in it to win it after that. I'm like, well, we're going to watch this. We're going to record it. I was taking notes. Come on, there's, there's some things that are worth taking notes. And I, I got my phone out, and I'm, I'm looking at all the places. And, you know, uh, some of them are, like, you know, unrealistic as far as getting to them, you know, unless you travel there one day. But uh, they got to the top three, four, and they're listing them, and they get to number one. And the number one place on the Food Network to eat fried chicken was in New Orleans, Louisiana. And I was like, my God, how have I never known this? And the place was Willie Mae's Scotch House. Anybody ever been to, I see some witnesses in the room. Anybody ever been to Willie Mae's Scotch House? All right. And it's, it's not in the quarter, but it's about five, ten minutes away from the quarter. It's not too far. Um, so if you're in the quarter, you can't walk there. But, but you can get there. And so, uh, anyway, anyway I, I put it in my phone and, and made it a point to one day get to Willie Mae's Scotch House. And so, um, and I don't know what, what happened was, but I think you and Angie, my, my brother-in-law, and anyway, your sister, were, were going out of town. They were flying out of New Orleans. So me and my, my brother-in-law, Matt Sharon, who is a fried chicken connoisseur, <laughs> um, made it a point after we dropped them off. <laughs> We're going to find Willie Mae Scotch House. We're going to find this house. And it, it literally is a house if you've ever been there. Anyway, so we dropped them off. We went to Willie Mae Scotch House. And, I'm, and I'm, you know, they got all kind of good sides, all kind of good things to eat. But I'm not, there for all, I'm not there for the mashed potatoes. I'm not there for the mac and cheese. I'm not there for, you know, the fried okra, even though that's all nice. I'm there for the fried chicken because the fried chicken is the best thing in the United States. It's the best fried chicken in the United States of America. So I'm like, they said, what do you want? I said, I want fried chicken. They said, how much do you want? I said, I want a double order. Like, give me double. Said, well, you get four pieces of this. I'm like, well, give me eight. I'm just telling you when I, I want to roll out of here. <laughs> you know, this is not like diet time. This is not fasting. This is not fasting and prayer time. This is enjoy the abundance of the Lord day. This is what this is, right? So we, we get in there, and I'm telling you what, they brought us that double order of fried chicken, and it, that chicken was for real. I mean, I'm trying to explain it appropriately. <laughs> it, you know what I mean? It, it, wasn't, it was juicy on the inside, but crunchy on the outside, and it wasn't just fried. It was almost like it was, what do you call it? Is it bro broasted? Like, it was like broasted, and the seasoning was just enough, spicy enough for it to hit you. You know what I mean? But not too spicy where it's going to hurt you. you know, it's just like the, just the perfect amount of, of, ev of everything. I'm telling you, anybody wants some fried chicken today? You know, like I'm going to New Orleans. We're going to make this thing happen. I, I have tasted and, and experienced, and I'm, I'm endeavoring to make your mouth water with my explanation of how good that fried chicken actually is. It's worth the wait. While we were there, people are Ubering to get in line. I mean, people from all over, whoever knows where they're, where they're from, visiting from around the country, around the world, just to, just to get some fried chicken at, at Willie Mays. My mouth's watering right now just thinking about if I'm telling you the truth. Anybody ever eaten something that you tried to explain it appropriately to somebody else so that they could properly understand just how good that really is? Anybody ever been somewhere that was just so magnificent so beautiful, you know, that you tried to explain how 
wonderful it, it really is. Anybody ever been to the, the beaches of the West Coast or driven you know, Highway 1 over there? Any, or anybody ever been to the Grand Canyon, you know? Anybody ever been to the mountains of Colorado? Yeah. Uh, anybody ever been to the bayous of Louisiana? <laughs> it's beautiful. I love it too. Anybody ever seen a sunset that's just you're like, that's one of the most beautiful things I have ever seen. Have you ever tried to take a picture of it and capture it? And then you look, you look at it or you try to explain it to somebody. You're like, it was really beautiful. And they're just like, that's nice. And you're like, but no, I'm just telling you, it was just, it was the most beautiful thing you've ever seen. It's just the most beautiful sunset, the most beautiful mountain range you ever seen, the most beautiful, you know, beaches you ever seen. I mean, it's just absolutely. And they're like, yeah, well, that's really, but you're trying to help them understand what you saw. So when, when David is saying in Psalm 34, David, the psalmist, the, 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 the one who would go to the house of God for refuge, the one who would worship and sing to the Lord, the one who loved the presence of God, the one who had a heart after God, says, oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. What he's saying is, I, I've been to Willie Mays. I've seen the beach. Yeah, I've seen this. I've been in this place, and I'm trying to help you understand how wonderful it really is. And what, I, what I've learned and what I, what I know is that when I've been in and when I've experienced the, the presence of the Almighty God, being with him in his presence, whether it's in my private time, devotion time, or when we gather in the house of the Lord like this, and we experience the presence of God together, is just so good. Yeah. It's just so real. It's so authentic. It's so, it's, there's just nothing else that compares to it. Do you know, every time I eat a piece of fried chicken, I think about Willie Mae Scotch House. It's just not quite as good. You know I mean, it's good, but it's not that. Every time I see a sunset, I think of something, a one that I've seen better. I'm like, well, that, that's a nice sunset, but I tell you a sunset. Right. right? And when you've been in the presence of God, no matter, come on, it don't matter what this world has to offer. It doesn't matter who's opening the show at the Grammys. Doesn't matter what concert, what sporting event you've been to, and I've been to some good stuff. It just doesn't seem to quite match up to the greatness of the presence of God. It just doesn't seem to compare. And it seems like people in this world, and sometimes even believers, Christians, are still like trying to find the thing that's going to fill the thing, that the, try to experience it. Like, I just want to, and it just doesn't seem to, to add, just doesn't seem to add up. I even uh, uh, watched and heard an interview from Tom Brady, and after he'd won a number of Super Bowls, they interviewed him, and he said, it's really great. I've won one of these Super Bowls, he said, but I just feel like there's something more, like there's just something else. And it's, and let me help you out. If he wins another Super Bowl this year, that's not going to be it. That's not the thing. It's nice. It's great. It's exciting. It's a high. It's like a, woo, it's a great accomplishment. People are going to pat you on the back and you're awesome. Right. But it doesn't, it doesn't feel what the presence of God can only feel. You were created by him for him to be in his presence, to enjoy, to taste, to see, to experience the presence of God. And even the old, in the Old Testament, they, they knew this. Moses would, would say it like this, like, if, if your presence doesn't go with me, I don't want to go. Show me your glory. Show me your presence. And the Lord told me, I'm going to put you in the cleft of the rock. I'm going to put you in this secret place. I'm going to put you in this great, I'm going to put you in this, this spot right here. And, and my goodness will pass before you. My goodness. And, and when Moses saying, show me your glory, the Lord said, I, I will. But I'm, you're going you're gonna to see my goodness. There's a place in the presence of God. There's a place that's been made available that's ready for you, for me. That's just, it's, it's just better than anything else that there is. It's just nothing else that can quite compare to being in the presence of God with the people of 
God. Now, I love music. One of my favorite, one of my favorite, favorite albums of all time, some of you are going to know this, some of you, this is going to be way out there for you, but it's, it's from a band called U2, and the album's called The Joshua Tree. It's one of the greatest albums ever made, and, and I, love, I love this record. And, you know, and for my 40th birthday, they were doing like a 25th anniversary tour of this, of this record. They're going to play the whole thing front to back, right? A side, flip the, you know, flip the tape, then the B side. All right, you're right. So I'm telling you what, man, I was so, I'm like, for my, she said, what are you going to do for your fourth birthday? I'm like, I want to find wherever that they're doing that, that concert, anywhere, Dallas, Houston. I want to be there. Like, I want us to go. I thought it'd be awesome, right? And so we went to Houston, went to the concert. I'm telling you what, they had a, they had a LED wall, like as big as our church. You know what I mean? It's like, <laughs> It was just massive. And they come out and they just start playing the whole thing front front. And I'm like, I, I literally don't don't like look down on me, okay? Don't, but I had tears in my eyes. <laughs> I'm just serious. I had tears in my come on, some of you've been to Boys to Men in, in Las Vegas and you had tears in your eyes too. You like <laughs> although we've come. <laughs> like, oh Jesus, yes, Lord. <laughs> I had tears in my eyes. I'm like, I'm being pulled emotionally into this because it's taking me back to like my college days and friends and time. Come on, some of y'all have music like that. It takes you back to a time and a season and a people and, and that sort of thing. And it, it was wonderful. But I, I, can I just be honest with you? It just didn't even compare to the presence of God in the room on just another Sunday in CWC in January 2000. It's just, it's just, it was great. But it's just, there's not enough things you can do to make the light show good enough. You know, and we got lights and we do, the, do some smoke and we got, but that's, that's not the thing. The thing is the presence of God showing up in a room. That's the thing. Like that's, that's it. So, so the psalmist would say it like this, Psalm 1611, he, he would say, and again, David, he said, you will show me the path of life. And in your presence, there's fullness of joy. And at your right hand are pleasures forevermore. Again, endeavoring to appropriately communicate how wonderful the presence of God is. In your presence, there is fullness, and the very word means satisfaction. Filled to the full, satisfied. Fullness of joy. I'm satisfied in your presence. You said it a few moments ago. This is not our home. The most at home you will ever feel while you are on the earth is when you are in the presence of God. That's the most at home you'll, you'll ever feel. You can't build a house that's comfortable enough, the right color on the walls and the right couches to make you feel good enough, a big enough TV and a nice kitchen and all, you know what I mean? That's nice. It's wonderful. And it, you know, it could be a temporary place, but you, you, you build something, as soon as you start building it, it's starting to fall apart. As soon, come on, you build a brand new house and you better keep that thing up for the next six months. Yes, stuff's going to be happening. You got to get stuff fixed, taken care of. Just don't, because it's just, it just deteriorates. It's just, it's just stuff. And you buy a brand new car, drive it off the lot. It's worth less as soon as you drive it off the lot and you have to get oil changed. And, you know, it's just all kind of, it's just stuff. And those, it's just, it's just what, what happens. But, but the presence of God is, he, is heaven on the earth. Is a satisfaction that is produced in his presence that just cannot be manufactured any other way. Just it just can't be done. And my whole desire for these few minutes right here that I'm sharing is to try to get you to drive to New Orleans to go to Willie Mays. <laughs> Ex 
Except I'm not really talking about Willie Mays. It's for you to, to make the presence of God gathering in, together with the people of God not an option. Like It's not an option. Right. If there's something beautiful to see, somewhere good to eat, Aaron Cody knows, I'm going to find a way to go out of my way. It's worth an extra 30 minutes. It's worth an hour. It's worth... Right? When it comes to the presence of God, I'm going to go out of my way. I'll wait in line if I need to. I'll be uncomfortable if I need to. I'll do, what, I'll do whatever it takes if, if I need to just to be in, in the presence of God and enjoy it together. So I, I'll just give you one more and then we'll, we'll finish. In Acts chapter 3, in verse 19, it says to, to repent or turn to the Lord, be converted, that your sins may be blotted out. And this is what it says, so that times of refreshing may come from the presence of the Lord. Times of refreshing come from the presence of the Lord. Refreshing. Safety, refuge, peace come from the presence of God. Amen. And as, as much as I enjoy a wonderful sunrise or sunset that does something good in my soul, it's, it's nice. There's it, it just nothing that I can see that can compare to the presence of God and the refreshing that happens. Amen. That happens there. Yes. As, there's rest there. There's, there's rest there. And there's times of refreshing for you this year. You may be good right now, but there'll be a few things that happen along the way this year that you, you will really need to press into the presence of God to get the refreshing that you really need. And, and look, you're just not going to find it in a bottle of wine. You're not going to find it in the special buildings with the leaves on the front. You don't know what I'm talking about? Okay, whatever. Praise the Lord. God bless you. Just not going to find it in those places. It's only going to be found in the presence of God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. How many I want to taste and see? How many I, how many I want to run for the house? Like, man, I'm running to that place. I'm running to that place. Hallelujah. And it's hard to explain, but there, there's probably most, most Sundays when you roll in here, you're good. You know what I mean? You're like, I'm just, I'm ready to go. Let's sing, sing something good. Let's preach something good. You're like, go for it. But there may be some Sundays where you need to roll in and you need somebody else. You need the corporate strength that's found in a place that that corporate strength lifts you. Now, as much as I love singing and worship and praise, sometimes I just sit there and listen. <laughs> if I'm honestly, I'm going to sing, I'm going to lift my voice, I'm going to praise the Lord. But there's sometimes, man, when the presence of God is rolling, I'm just like, I just need to drink this in for a few minutes. Because there's a refreshing that's found in it that I need. 